Losing a loved one is one of the most difficult seasons to navigate through in life. And losing a child is devastating. And in her new book, Before We Said Hello, Becky Nordquist brings hope after pregnancy and infant loss. Becky, welcome to Real Life. Oh, thank wow. you. Wow, that song you sang was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And to me, it gave words to what women walk through and men when they're suffering um, a miscarriage, an infant loss, a stillborn. There's so many issues. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. One in four women and men, because there's daddies involved, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's very, sadly, very common, more common than what we talk about, mm -hmm. for, for sure. Tell us your story. Where did it begin? Oh, goodness. Wow, that's quite a loaded bag there. but. Um, you know, uh, as far as the pregnancy and infant loss, my husband and I, we experienced five pregnancy losses, mm -hmm. and then we had a stillborn son, Nicholas. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, in the period of just several years. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was very difficult. We went through a, a huge season of loss, where we not only lost babies, but we lost family members and, you know, parents. Mm -hmm. And I actually miscarried at my father-in-law's funeral. And wow sat wow. there at the graveside and really couldn't say anything, you know, mm -hmm. just had to kind of go about it silently. And it was a very difficult time. It's, it, it felt like waves yeah. of grief mm -hmm. that we just couldn't get our head above mm -hmm. for a while there. You know, in the church, uh, we are all talking about how we don't talk a lot about it. You know, my wife and I, we've lost three, possibly four, mm -hmm. uh, in our processes of having children. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of shame a lot of guilt that comes around those things, you know, because, you know, women feel a certain way about that, which, I mean, rightfully so why they battle with it, but could you speak to that of like, why do we battle? Why do women battle with the shame and the guilt? And why is it so quiet in the church? Why aren't we talking about this? I'm so sorry, first of all, for your losses. Thank you. You know, it's, it's interesting because as we've walked this journey with the project, with Music for the Soul is who I partnered with, a beautiful nonprofit that deals with all kinds of difficult topics and points to Jesus, you know. Um, guilt and shame and fear are three of the things that we see most commonly. And what are they? They're, they're all three tools of our enemy, yeah. truly. Um, I think it's so hard, especially speaking from a woman's standpoint, you know, we where we were created to bring life. We were created to nurture. And so suddenly we find ourselves in the middle of miscarriage and stillbirth and we're, we're forced to participate in the death of our child. Mm -hmm. So there's wow. that shame, why am I not able to save this baby? Why am I not able to, you know, have a good pregnancy or for some women we're finding that they're grieving infertility right now not yeah. able to get pregnant so there's that shame why can't i do what i thought i was created by god to do which is to bring forth life and so you know the enemy can use those things certainly you know if we hand it over to him mm -hmm. You know, we have to hand that over to him. We right. get that choice if we're going to allow the enemy to use it or the Lord to use it. Mm -hmm. And God certainly is so gracious to give us beauty for ashes. But it's a real struggle that we have as men and women. Like, should I not have taken that medication while I was pregnant? Wow. You know, or should I, did I not take yeah, enough yeah, um, yeah. vitamins? Did I not yes. get enough sleep? I shouldn't have lifted that heavy thing. You know, where wow. did I go wrong? Mm -hmm. You know, thinking that it's in our power to, to handle life what, or death. What do they do with that then? I mean, are, we, we've mm -hmm. exposed that, but if someone's probably watching right now that's battling with that and did I do this, did I do that? Mm -hmm. what, what do I do with all those feelings and emotions and thoughts? Grief is such an individual thing, isn't it? Um, everybody goes a different place with their grief. Uh, I can only really speak to my own experience. And you, ha like I said, you have the choice of where you're going to go with it. You know, we can either, you know, fall before the Lord and ask him to show us the truth about the situation, to bring us comfort. Mm -hmm. But the best thing we can ask is to say, God, I need to see you in this mm -hmm. somewhere, even in the broken pieces of it mm -hmm. and lay it before him. Because, you know, shame and fear, those things are not of the Lord. That's right. You know, he, you know, Jesus came, we're in the Christmas season. Mm -hmm. You know, he came so that we would have life to the full and have victory, even though we live in a broken, fallen world. Mm -hmm. So constantly directing your feet into the direction of who God is in our brokenness 
is imperative in working through and processing shame mm -hmm. and definitely finding your community. Because when you're talking one in four, yeah. that's a lot of people. Wow. That's a quarter wow. of the population of the world that has walked this walk but aren't really talking about it much. Mm -hmm. So, you know, find your community, find that support. And most of all, we have to live in the truth of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I like how your book is written because it's in almost like a daily devotional with a mm -hmm. scripture that just really ministers to the soul and thoughts. And then a, a place to write stuff down. The book is not too thick where it's overwhelming when you're walking through something. And there's also stories of men mm -hmm. in here and, and how they navigated and walked through. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was very important when we took on the task of writing a book. I said, you know, it has to be short. It's mm -hmm. such a hard, heavy topic. And these emotions mm -hmm. and putting truth to that emotion is a difficult task and we need to be able to digest slowly. And certainly when you're in fresh grief, it's hard to read. I don't, I don't know about y'all, but I had a really hard time opening the Word of God in the middle of those waves of grief. Mm -hmm. And um, so I wanted it to be really short, but also to have a place to write out where you are. You know, that's the beauty of who our God is. We can be honest with Him. It can be messy. It can, we can ask the hard, big questions because He's a very big God. Yes. And it's so important that we have a voice for the dads mm -hmm. because they are the quiet, unsung heroes. You know, they want to be strong. And, you know, so often our society is, you know, men don't get to express their feelings. Hopefully we're changing that yes. a little yeah. bit. But, um, you know, it's so important that men have that opportunity to speak and process their grief too. My husband did a lot of it while he was mowing the lawn and working in the barn. So, yeah. wow. you know, guys grieve differently from women. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing is that we offer each other the grace yeah. to grieve how each individual grieves mm -hmm. in your relationships, like between husband and wife, you know, don't, don't ex have an expectation for your partner to grieve the same way you do, but rather love each other through that grieving process. You know, as a man uh, experiencing these types of losses, I know what it's like. And there's a bond that a woman has with that baby that mm -hmm. men just don't have. While I mm -hmm. experienced that loss, mm -hmm. there's something that a woman is walking through carrying that mm -hmm. seed. You know, what would you tell a man? What I'm guaranteed there's somebody watching right now that has walked through that recently. One in four, there's a 25% chance that somebody right now is watching that's fair. What would you tell a man? What can he do for his wife during that time of loss? Mm. Be honest with your heart and the hurt that you're feeling too. Um, listening and being present, remaining present and attentive to her physical needs first because there are physical needs. Yeah, you know, we yeah. go through a flush of hormonal changes wow. and yes. offering right. mercy and grace for your wife who's not only grieving, but she's also going through a lot of physical changes. You know, we had her stillbirth. I mean, the body can be quite cruel. I mean, wow. you know, yeah. your body's thinking you just had a baby that's living. Mm -hmm. So all the things that you experience mm -hmm. After, after having a baby, wow. you still yeah. experience wow. and there's no baby to nurse. Wow. And that it's almost, a, mm. almost like salt in a wound for women a lot of mm. times. And you know, so just being, remaining present mm -hmm. and, and asking God to, how can I minister mm -hmm. to her right now? How can I remain awake and present mm. in the situation? And also grieving alongside. Yeah. Listening is so important though, isn't it? To really mm -hmm. take in someone's heart mm -hmm. and love on it. And also, I think it's great just to ask the question, how can I be here for you? Mm -hmm. How can I walk with you through this? Mm -hmm. And asking, mm -hmm. what do you need from me most right. right now? And hearing that answer and then acting on it. Yeah. I know after, when we had a miscarriage, I just didn't feel like myself for a while. I just <laughs> felt like inside, like, something was like doing gymnastics. I just felt off, you know, it, it took a little bit to kind of get back in, in balance and to really mm -hmm. feel like yourself. How important is it to know the character of God 
when you're walking through this? Because I remember thinking, you know what? I am sad, but I'm not shaken. I trust mm. God yeah, with my life. <laughs> I trust that my body did the right thing. He knew what was happening. This is not the end of my mm. life. Like my, my faith was not shaken that I trust God. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, it was just like that scripture that we heard earlier in mm -hmm. 1 Peter, right? Yeah. I mean, we have to humble ourselves. That takes a, that requires a humbling yeah, of right. our spirits. And so we can relinquish the answer to why did this happen? Yeah. You know, in that song before we said hello, we were crying out, why? Tell me why. And you know, we it's okay to ask that mm -hmm. question, wow. but there's that beautiful place of when we humble ourselves and we claim God is sovereign in the Psalms, mm -hmm. full of lament. Mm -hmm. But in those lament Psalms, what is the common theme? Yes. That God is sovereign Amen. and he sees things. We can't wrap our mm -hmm. finite minds around an infinite plan. Right. So bending our knee and knowing that God is good, 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 and he cannot be anything but good and he sees things that we Amen. cannot Amen. but i have to say some of that is pre-work don't you think i mean before yes. you enter a season of grieving mm -hmm. and loss mm -hmm. knowing the character of god yeah. will yeah. give you an edge Amen. on the Amen. broken fallen Amen. world Amen. standing in that truth when you don't feel it because right. it doesn't feel good right. your hopes your dreams wrapped in this baby and suddenly it's all gone and there's sometimes not a good human explanation for it. And that's when we press into the truth of the word, even though we don't feel it emotionally. Wow. Amen. There is so much Amen. more that we can discuss about this topic. And we're going to talk a little bit later. Thank you so much, Becky, for your story and for this amazing rich packed book and guess what we want to pray for you if you have struggled in yeah, any way yeah. with infertility with infant loss with miscarriages or you know of somebody please call our prayer line 888-665-4483 we really do believe in the hope and the healing power that jesus brings only jesus can come into the deepest parts of our heart and our soul in our own private intimate world yes of what we're walking through. He hears you, he knows you, and he wants to help you. Right now we're going to hear from Tom.